Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and in this video, we're going to replace my power steering cooler. This is a pretty straightforward component, but there's a few nuances about this that I wanted to cover really quick. And for those of you who just want to see how you replace this, you can fast forward. I have timestamps in the bottom, in the description, shows you the section that you can fast forward to where I remove the old one and I install this one. For the rest of you, I wanna talk about it a little bit because people are gonna ask about bypassing these, where I got mine, and how do we know if they're bad. So let's talk a little bit about power steering coolers. They all have a slightly different look to them, but generally this is the style that they all adhere to. And this is actually a copper canister and coolant hoses connect on both ends of this. So in mine, because I use raw water cooling, that means my river water comes in here and goes through this. Uh, I believe it is not directional and can be installed either way, but I'm going to double check that as well. And then these lines here are where the low pressure power steering fluid hoses connect. And I believe what happens is through here, there's a bit of coiled pipe and that goes where this water flows through inside of here. So the idea is that the water flowing through here is cooler than the power steering fluid, thereby cooling it off a little bit before it goes back to your pump. Now what's interesting about these power steering coolers is that they are actually some that have a drain in them. So they have a fitting located here and it's a petcock and you can drain the raw water out of it whenever you're winterizing your boat. The style that my boat comes with does not have that. So I will have to make sure that I am taking care of winterizing this correctly if in fact part of my problem was this cracking due to freezing. And we won't know that until I take off my, my old one. These can fail because when your boat is winterized, if you haven't fully drained your cooling system and refilled it with appropriate level antifreeze or have it dry, water can be sitting in here. And if water is sitting in here, it can freeze and crack this because once again, this is just a thin copper barrel. Now, if mine has failed, it's possible due to freezing, and I'll know that once I pull it off, or also it could have failed from old age. My boat is 20 years old. So after 20 years, maybe this is corroded inside, and, uh, corroded inside uh, and had some other issues which has caused it to leak. Another thing is uh, something else could have failed in here. Uh, one of my hoses could be loose, uh, fitting could be bad, um, any of those types of things. What I found is when I realized that power steering fluid was leaking again from my boat, I checked the steering actuator where those new seals are. Nothing was leaking there. I checked all of my connections into the power steering actuator. Nothing was leaking there. I checked where the pump is and the other lines. Nothing was leaking. This bad boy is located on the very back of my engine in an area that I cannot see. And I've never been able to see because the way that my engine sits, so far back and down in my boat, there's, I cannot get my head anywhere near seeing this. And this is mounted to the back of the engine block. But what I was able to find out, and mine's kind of mounted at this angle, is as I was reaching around, checking the hoses and the lines for leak, when I reached around and I touched right here, because mine sits at this angle, when I touched right here, I got power steering fluid on my hands and this shouldn't be leaking power steering fluid at all. So I don't know if you know something gave away here or if this part is leaking, not sure what has failed here or if it's just a connection, but I found power steering fluid on my hands whenever I reached around there and this is the component that's there. So that's why I have to change it. Let's talk about bypassing 
this. One of the things that a lot of people consider doing is when these fail is they consider bypassing this altogether. And believe me, I considered that option because basically if you put a, a connector in here or replace one of these hoses, you can just run your power steering fluid through that. And then you can do the same thing with your coolant line. You could just get a longer hose or a connector and put these together. The problem with that is that even cars, which everybody thinks do not have power steering coolers on them, many of them actually do have power steering coolers. And some of the power steering coolers in a car or a truck is literally where the power steering goes through a uh, aluminum or steel line and it bends around back and forth a little bit in an area where airflow comes across there to help cool the power steering fluid. So people will say, well, my car doesn't have this on there or my truck and I've been driving it for 10 years does not have one of these on there. That's true. It might not have this on there, but it does have a way to help dissipate heat from power steering fluid. Another reason is because the engine compartment in your inboard outboard boat does not get as much airflow and uh, cross air circulation ventilation that a car or truck does in the engine compartment you think about it your car or your truck has a fan on the front of the motor and as you're moving down the road wind is going past your engine your power steering in your boat that's in a very enclosed area where your engine is. So the only coolant that's going through there is the coolant that's going through the pipes. And the final reason that sold me on it is, do you think any boat manufacturer would install a part like this if they didn't need to? If they thought they could get away without putting a part like this on here, don't you think they would have done that? So where did I get mine? Well, you can buy a Volvo Penta part, original part for this, and a lot of times I do try to buy the factory correct parts for these kinds of things. But this time I decided to take a little bit of a chance and I bought it from a company called Mr. Cool. And Mr. Cool makes power steering coolers for various model boats and their prices are much more reasonable than buying directly from Volvo Penta. And because this is not an electromechanical part, it is basically just some pipes where power steering fluid goes through and raw water goes through. I'm thinking to myself, I'm not taking too much of a gamble by using an aftermarket part in this situation. I have a photo that I took by literally reaching over top of my engine and randomly holding my camera taking lots of different photos around there to try to find this component and I cannot get my eyes anywhere near this and what's interesting about it is it looks like we have plastic clamps that hold these hoses on which is your low pressure power steering fluid so hopefully I won't lose a lot of fluid from them and then there are hose type clamps that fit on these two fittings here for the water and then once I get those off, there is a big strap clamp that goes around this whole canister that mounts it to the back of the engine. That's going to be pretty interesting to remove because I have to do all of this blindly. So I will be laying on top of my engine all the way across my engine bay and reaching around with tools, hoping I don't drop them in my bilge to try to remove this component and to try to take that clamp loose. So I can't even see how that clamp fits on there or anything. So it's a complete blind project. All right, so we're out on the boat now. Got my bucket of tools. I tried to bring lots of different pliers, screwdrivers and sockets. And basically there's only that couple of clamps that have to be taken off. Got some paper towels. I got some of these uh, bilge cloths. Catch any power steering fluid that goes down in the bilge. And here's why it's such a problem in this boat. So this area here, I mean, there's not a lot of clearance here. And 
my engine is down in here and I took the cover off already the covers over here which you know that's gonna be nice because that'll stab me in the chest and we have to go over top and then there's this panel here which is in the way this is this is our uh, this is the back of the boat it's like the swim platform area where the seat hinges on and then underneath of this behind the distributor actually just barely see here's the top clamp right here and this uh, cable here is strapped to it and then there's our unit there so it looks like I can see actually two of my clamps from above here which is probably better than I thought it would be <laughs> so it's still gonna be really tough and really hard to see we're gonna go in and cut that strap that's holding that uh, accelerator cable that's fine I'm gonna take the screw loose of the top radiator hose all right so I got the top hose worked loose and slid back I mean <laughs> I got the top hose clamp worked loose and slid back and I slid it back enough where it catches on things because I've had a problem before if I just loosen the hose clamp take the hose off that the clamp drops down into the bilge and then you lose another clamp so now I'm going to try to get the top coolant hose off the important thing is before I get this assembly loose is to get all these hoses off because that way I've got something to work against while I'm trying to get them off this is my tool to pry the edge of the hose loose Oh, there we go. Some of this stuff just requires a little bit of patient wiggling. That strap there is kind of in my way. It's holding these wires kind of tight, isn't it? I don't know, it might not be. All right, so the next we have to get this clamp off of here. This is one of those weird little plastic, I call them automotive style clamps. According to my calculations I can stick a pick in here and try to pry it apart there we go yep got it all right that clamp is now loose all right so this is our top power steering fluid clamp so I can slide this back Need to not lose my pick in my belch. It's probably hooked up to the high pressure line that goes over to the power steering unit. They probably put the low pressure and the high pressure lines, bundled them together. So I got another strap that I need to undo right here. All right, so at this point, to recap, we've got the top coolant hose off. I've got the clamp off the top power steering line. So I got to get the top power steering line free, the bottom coolant line free, the bottom power steering line free, and then get the clamp that holds the whole unit on to the engine. I don't know what's involved with getting that clamp off. Um, the diagrams that I've seen show it as being like a, a ring. So I don't know if it's got something that holds it in that, you know, hinges the whole bracket or if I have to remove the whole ring from the engine, I'm not sure. And then we're halfway done. <laughs> All right. So we have a strap on here. It seems to be holding this. So 
access it. That gives me a little bit more wiggle room with this hose. Okay, pivots, that's good. Okay. It implies that it will come off. There we go. And we're leaking some power steering fluid, that's okay. I got rags down below. I expected this. That's quite all right. I'll tuck it up higher like that. Maybe keep it. Hopefully, we get all this off that we see that there's something wrong with this. Because if there isn't anything wrong with it, that's going to kind of. Oh, well, you know, whatever. It is funny with some kind of mechanic work that that's what you, you know, you want to see something bad. Because if you see something bad, then you know that there was something that was wrong. Okay. So I have the same thing over here. This line is zip tied to another line. And then there's my fitting. So I can get to this fitting pretty good from, from the other side. And from here, I can feel where it's ratchet strapped to another one. So that's cool. Okay, let's get that one off. Never thought in my 50s that I'd be laying on top of an engine in the back of a boat. All right, so I can feel the zip tie, but I can't really get my fingers on that to cut it without taking a chance. Because see, these are sharp. Let's try to get the clamp loose first. Now this clamp, I am working blindly, but I undid the other clamp, so I've got that going for me. All right, the clamp is off. Next is the hose clamp and I can see it that's awesome all right remember when I said I could see it there it is yes I see it now let's try around here can I see anything here bottom hose is free. I mean, the clamp is. <laughs> Just the clamp. I'm in a very precarious position here. I'm literally got all my weight laying right on top of the engine. Fortunately, I don't have all my tools right here with me, but... Kind of comfy right here. I don't know if anybody watches Vice Grip Garage, but Derek from Vice Grip Garage will always say something like, I wonder what Ryan Reynolds is doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. We are off, as you can hear. Is this hose attached to some other spot there, or is it just wedged? It's just kind of wedged, I think. There. All right. That hose is off. So, if I can get this power steering line off. Everything will be free. Everything, I don't know. Then we just have the clamp. 
the Mashugana clamp. And it was, it was not a dangerous crack, it was just the crack of the hose coming free from this. But I think I need to definitely do that zip tie so that I can have room to leverage this hose. <coughs> Got it. It rotates on there. Clamp is out of the way. We just gotta pull it off. Maybe I'll leave this one on right now. Okay. I feel a bolt or nut on the top side here, which might be this strap clamp. Are you on it? Yes. This is the right size. No. All right, so I tried an eight millimeter on that. It didn't seem to work. So I'm going with the three eighths. It feels like I can't get onto there. So I think that nut that I've been taking loose for the strapping thing, I think is just a, uh, I got just helps hold it tight into the clamp. So I think if I get that nut off, unfortunately I think that nut will drop down into the engine. And I fear that it, even if I get that nut all the way off, that it's just going to still be tight. And there we go. This is what I need. The 9 sixteenths bolt underneath of this clamp. That's the only bolt that holds that clamp on. Got a 9 sixteenths here. And we're going in. <laughs> I didn't bring any really heavy duty tools because I didn't think I was going to be doing anything really heavy duty today. Alright, so Took another little break again to go in and take a look at some stuff. I looked at my C-Lock manual and it shows this particular clamp uses one, one bolt. The clamp that holds on this cooler. And uh, so I'm hoping that information is accurate. So I think I got to take off this big 9 16 bolt. Now they show it going on to something where there's a nut on the other side of it. Oh my goodness. I hope there isn't a nut on the other side of it. That would stink. Because I don't know how I'm going to get to that nut. It would be on the other side of that bolt. I'm hoping it actually does just bolt to the block. And anyway, I got a uh, half inch drive socket now, ratchet, whatever thing, yeah. because it gives me more leverage. There we go. Is on it? No. I don't know what I'm doing here. start turning looser then I know that oh yeah there are so many hoses in the way here that be able to try to see if there is a something on the other side of this. Oh I can see it now there is when I get all the way in here I can see where this nut is because the light is just enough in here right now.
And if I can put this on that nut. I know, is it the right thing to do? No. Is it, uh, is it a good idea? No. So some of you who have been watching this are right now going, you know what, I've changed my mind. I'm never going to replace this part if I need to. I'm going to pay somebody to do it. And when that mechanic comes back with a really high bill, you're going to know why. Right? Right. The nice thing is, too, is the vice grips then held the nut. So we didn't lose the nut. And we are free. I just got to get this one power steering line off. a few hours later got myself all tidied up now I figured you didn't need to see me reinstalling the power steering cooler since essentially installation is the same as removal and it usually goes a whole lot quicker so here's a couple things that I learned first of all when I took off my old power steering cooler I could not find any visible damage to it at all um, unfortunately, it was not cracked. Uh, there was no uh, areas where I could see where fluid was leaking out of it. Matter of fact, it, it all looked fine. Um, it looked really good. But I went ahead and changed it anyway because I had purchased another power steering cooler. So one of the thoughts that I had early on, which may be true, is it may be those plastic hose clamps that are on there. Over time, those hoses can shrink, swell, whatever. And those plastic clamps are not the best types of clamps. So what may have happened is my plastic clamp may have actually been what was failing uh, and leaking. So I have the plastic clamps on there again right now, but I'm going to keep an eye on it because I want to see if it starts leaking at the same spot, then the first thing I'm going to do is get a stainless steel uh, band type clamp like on the cooling lines and place that on there in place of the plastic clamps and see if that fixes the problem. So another thing I did learn was clearly I didn't make any mistakes with winterizing my boat last year because it did not crack from poor winterization, so that's good to know. Um, now I have a spare steering cooler if in fact it was the clamp or the connection on that lower hose that was causing the problem. But uh, yeah, it took a little bit to get the mounting bracket off of the old cooler uh, because it uses a flathead screw on one side and then a nut on the other, and so it's very difficult to hold that while you're trying to take that apart. Um, so I, I took me a little bit to take that off of there. But then I fitted it on the new cooler and reinstalled everything and, and it went fine. So I've done a couple other videos about things we're working on the power steering system and I hadn't always done a good job of bleeding my system whenever I was finished. So I really kind of did a little bit of research to find the best way to bleed your system after doing a steering repair. And what I found is to, first of all, fill up the reservoir, check it to make sure it's full cold. Once the reservoir is full cold, put the cap back on and steer the boat lock to lock. Go back and check the reservoir. The idea is you don't want it to get so low where it starts sucking air. Because if it starts sucking air, then you've got air in the line, more air in the lines. And when you have more air in the lines, then you're, it's harder to bleed at all. And it starts to get foamy and frothy. So one of the things they do, they say to do, is to go lock to lock a few times and then check the fluid. Once you've got that where it's not going down anymore, then start the engine, let it run for a little while, check the fluid again. If it's low, top it up, and then do the lock to lock with the steering a couple times there while you're topping up the fluid. Now the mistake a lot of people make, and I've made in the past, is they'll have the engine running, they'll go lock to lock a bunch of times and it'll start sucking air in that system. They go to add fluid and it's foamy and frothy looking. If that happens, then you need to let it cool down and let the fluid settle 
where instead of it being a foamy fluid, where it becomes separated fluid again, and then do the same thing. Do the lock to lock, adding fluid, trying not to let it suck any air. So everything seems to be holding up fine, and we'll see over time how all of this works. Um, I'd hate to think that I went through all of this trouble just because of a bad clamp, but maybe watching this video can save you from replacing a power steering cooler unnecessarily if you just have a bad clamp. Obviously, as you can see from this video and all of my grunting and groaning while I was laying over top of the engine, um, this is a challenging job. Um, it, it's a far reach, it's a hard place to work, and um, you know, not all boats are set up like this, but that's how my boat is set up, and you know, it's an interesting project. If you ever have to do your power steering cooler, I hope this video is instructional to help you know what you're getting involved with and really what steps you need to take to be able to change it. So that's it for me for right now. Here's another video picked just for you based on other things that you've been watching. And here's a playlist of videos similar to this one. You stay safe out there in the water and hopefully you're not having to change a power steering cooler anytime soon because that was not a fun day.